Friction is the force that resists movement when two objects are in contact with each other and are trying to move. And so, say we have this man pushing this box and it's really heavy and so he's um, not moving it well. We could um, zoom into a microscopic perspective of the contact points between the box and the ground. And I've cut out two index cards to kind of demonstrate this but those surfaces aren't completely flat, they're irregular, and they might have jags in them, kind of like, kind of like these um, index cards have cut into them. So they might be setting down like this against each other, and to get it to slide past each other, it's, kinda, it's gotta be pushed up and over these ridges, and so those ridges are pushing back on um, each other and keeping this box from moving. And so let's say the bot, the man is pushing on the box with just one finger. He's pushing it, but it's obviously not gonna go anywhere because it's heavy. Well, if he pushes on it with one hand, it's probably still not gonna move because it's still too heavy. So what um, force, what force P does this man have to push the box for it to start to move? And for um, those ridges to kind of all move up and slide along each other, uh, on top of each other. Well, that force will be the friction force um, when the friction force is equal to um, mu, which is the coefficient of static friction, multiplied by the normal force. And remember that gravity is pulling down on this box with um, some amount of force depending on the weight of the box, and the floor is pushing back up on the box to keep it from just falling down and that is the normal force. So the normal force multiplied by the coefficient of friction is going to equal that force um, that's going to keep the box from sliding. And now there's two different coefficients of friction. We've got the static coefficient of friction and the kinetic coefficient of friction. And those are different because the force of friction that is going to be caused when these ridges are all kind of lined up and down in each other, that is going to be greater than when they're just on top here, just sliding along each other and that box is moving, or whatever the objects might be that they're moving along each other. And so, fun in fact, that um, coefficient of kinetic friction is about 25% less on average than the static friction, obviously depending on other variables, but, um, with the same two objects, that force of friction, or that coefficient of static friction will be about 25% um, more than the kinetic friction. So, the man pushes on this box, the friction force is keeping this box from sliding. There's nothing else on the box that's resisting the movement um, that this man is pushing with, or the force that this man is pushing with. And so, the um, amount of force that he is pushing with, with that same amount of force, the, the friction on the bottom of the box is pushing back. And it's pushing in the opposite direction of impending movement. So the box, if it was to move, it would go that way, and that means that the force of friction is pushing this way, the opposite direction. And the, so the force of friction and the um, force of the push is going to be equal up until um, you reach this maximum um, amount of friction, which again is the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. And once that is reached, it will start moving. So when you're given equation or problems where it asks you to find at what, what is the minimum force that you need to um, push something with to get it to start moving, well, you'll figure out what um, the normal force is and multiply it by the coefficient of static friction. And that is the force that you will be, you will need to push the object with to get it to start moving. If the force is less than that, then it is not going to be, to be moving. So if we say that um, our force P is less than or equal to mu sub, mu multiplied by the normal force, then it is not going to be moving. But once P becomes greater than mu multiplied by N, then it is going to start moving.
and that's how friction works. Um, I'll be covering rolling friction in another video. You can click on this video link to go to that. And I will also be going over some example videos. And if you want, um, those will be at the end of this video. You can click on those links. So if you found this video helpful, hit that like button. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments. Um, I've also been creating some awesome designs with the student engineering logo, like the one on the shirt. If you want to buy stuff like this, you can check out links down in the description. They're, they go to Amazon and Teespring, and buying that helps me a lot. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, student engineering. My goal is to better help other engineering students like me understand engineering. So if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe.